Hello and welcome to Biology Bites, Immune Response Part 2, with Laura. Hi Laura. Hi. So far we've talked about the primary and secondary defences, as well as the role of the B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Now we want to talk a little bit about antibodies and immunity. Could you please remind us of the definition for antigens? Well, antigens are molecules that can stimulate an immune response. Foreign antigens are detected by the immune system and stimulate the production of antibodies. These antibodies will be specific to the antigen. That brings us nicely onto antibodies. Antibodies are protein molecules produced by the lymphocytes in the immune system. They are released in response to an infection. Antibodies have a specific shape that is complementary to that of a particular antigen. Antibodies can therefore identify and neutralise antigens. What about the structure of antibodies? Well, the polypeptide chains of an antibody are held together by disulfide bridges. They have a hinge region which allows flexibility when the antibody binds to the antigen. A variable region which has a specific shape that is complementary to a particular antigen. The variable regions differ between antibodies. A constant region which enables the body to recognise the antibody as self. The constant region is the same in all antibodies. So how do antibodies actually work? Antibodies can make microbes stick together in clumps, and then the phagocytes ingest them. Some antibodies stick to microbes to make it easier for phagocytes to find them. Some even stick to toxins produced by the microbes and make them harmless. Some antibodies stick to microbes and make them burst. OK, so can you tell us a bit about the primary and secondary response? The primary response is the response of the body when it encounters an antigen for the first time. The response is slow because it takes time for the correct B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes to recognise the disease. It takes time for the lymphocytes to divide by mitosis and it takes time to manufacture the correct antibodies to combat the antigens. But during this time, the infected person will have symptoms of the disease. Exactly. At the end of the primary response, both the T and B lymphocytes will have produced memory cells which remain in the body for a long time after the infection. This allows the immune system to respond quickly to a second infection. So now the person is immune? Yes. If the same pathogen enters the body again, the immune system will produce a quicker immune response. And we'd call this the secondary response? Exactly. The secondary response often gets rid of the pathogen before the person experiences any symptoms of the disease. OK, what more can you tell us about immunity? Well, immunity can be active or passive. Active immunity is where a person's own immune system makes its own antibodies after being stimulated by an antigen. A natural example of this type of immunity is when you become immune after catching a disease. An artificial example is when you become immune after having a vaccination. Passive immunity is where a person receives antibodies made by another organism. The person's own immune system does not make them. A natural example would be the antibodies provided via the placenta or via breast milk from mother to her baby. An artificial example would be the immunity provided by injection of antibodies made from another individual, e.g. tetanus injections. So what is the science behind vaccinations? Vaccinations involve injecting a person with a weakened, dead or similar pathogen, or with antigens, and this activates their immune system. When the vaccine enters the body, lymphocytes that recognise the antigen respond to it as if it was the real disease. This causes the immune system to make antibodies and memory cells. The memory cells provide the long-term immunity. How can this help control the disease? If most people in the population are vaccinated, the disease is less likely to affect the people who are not vaccinated because there is no one to catch it from. This is called herd immunity. Thanks for that, Laura. We just need to cover smoking and its effects now to wrap up this chapter. So stay tuned for more podcasts coming soon. Thanks for watching.